Well, hi kids. I am so excited to get to see you because we are starting our newest curriculum on the real Christmas story. Now, I'm guessing you think I'm pretty silly, right? Talking about Christmas here in July? Well, I have to admit, I am getting a little bit silly. I think that it would be so much fun to talk about Christmas in July. Here we are in some of the hottest months of the year, and I personally think we need to have more fun here as we finish out our summer and get ready for um, the fall. So I hope that you will enjoy joining me for Christmas in July. Maybe you will get your Christmas sweater out or maybe you'll put up a little Christmas tree or find your stockings um, and really get into the Christmas spirit with me. Well, we are going to be taking a look at the real Christmas story. You know, sometimes our Christmas carols and the traditions of Christmas have made us um, learn things and put some things into a Christmas story that we just really don't find anywhere in the Bible. And so we are going to be talking about the, uh, some of the people who make up the Christmas story and, and what, what they teach us about what ordinary people need to know about the faith. And so I am super, super excited to get to do that with you today. Now, one thing that's not going to be different is that I still have a helper who tells the story with me and you can choose if you want to uh, stand up or sit down when uh, Rudy here does those things. Can you say hi, Rudy? Oh, there we go. Rudy's got kind of a flimsy arm, but he's got an awesome little bell. Doesn't that make you just want Christmas to be here right away? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Rudy, are you going to help me tell the story? Okay, excellent. Well, I am so excited that that we are celebrating Christmas here in July. I love Christmas. Can't wait to get started. And uh, every time I tell the the main character's name today, the main character is Mary. That's right. It's Mary. You are either going to stand up or sit down with Rudy here. Okay? Okay. Here's the story. It was an ordinary day in an ordinary town called, do you know it? Nazareth. That's right. An ordinary girl was all alone when an extraordinary something happened to her. The angel Gabriel appeared to Mary. He spoke to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored of the Lord. In other words, Gabriel was telling Mary, Hello, you are someone who is very special to God. He thinks very highly of you. She was totally confused. And of course, a little scared. You would be too, right, if an angel came to you? Well, Gabriel went on to tell Mary that God had chosen her to be the mother of God's son. The Holy Spirit was going to place a baby in her tummy, and she was going to give birth to the Savior of the world. Mary was shocked. How could this be? She asked the angel. Mary knew that she was just an ordinary girl. She wasn't a special princess in a castle somewhere. How could she give birth to the king of kings, the savior of the world? In fact, she wasn't even married yet. She was really confused about how all this could happen. The angel said to her, nothing is impossible to God. The power of God will cause all of this to happen. You will give birth to the son of, man, of God. Now Mary could have gone and argued with that angel, right? She could have chosen not to believe the angel. She could have chosen many other things at that moment. But Mary chose to believe that God was able to do the impossible. She spoke to the angel and she said, 
I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left. How do you think Mary felt when the angel Gabriel came and gave her that news? How do you think she felt? Yeah, surprised, confused, excited, terrified maybe. We don't we don't know, but we can imagine, right? Why do you think God chose Mary? Yeah, maybe she was somebody special. Maybe he could tell that she had a lot of faith. Maybe God wanted to teach you and me that God can use ordinary people to do extraordinary things. What do you think about that, Rudy? You think? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, hey, Rudy, would you come back next week and help us tell the story? Oh, excellent. Okay, goodbye. I'll tell you what, you can send sit right over here on our Christmas tree and you can can listen for the rest of our story. Does that sound good? Okay. All righty. Well, I I have a question for you. I am am thinking about buying a sports car. Okay? I know. It's crazy, but I'm thinking. I'm just thinking. Do you think I should buy a sports car that looks like this? Or should I buy a sports car that looks like this? Oh, oh, I think most of you are saying I should buy one like this. Am I right? A special one? Hmm. You don't think I should get an ordinary clunker? Oh, huh. Okay. All right. Well, let me try another one on you here. I would like to go and get my friend whose birthday is today, a stuffed animal. Should I get a little stuffed animal to say happy birthday? Or should I get the biggest one I could find? Ordinary or like extraordinary? What should I do? You know, I imagine many of you said I should get the biggest, most extraordinary one because it'll, it would make that birthday that much more special, right? I understand that. Well, the good thing about God is that God chooses ordinary people. God could choose this fancy car, right? God could do that. But instead, oftentimes God chooses ordinary, the small little stuffed animal to do amazing things. And so we are so thankful for that. And it is important that we are willing to follow God's plan. Just like Mary was willing to follow God's plan, we also, we ordinary people, need to be willing to follow God's plan. And we also have to remember, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. You know, you might think that it is impossible to get an A on a math test, right? But with a lot of work and some prayer, nothing is impossible with God. You know, Mary was a very unlikely mother, but she she did what God asked her to do, right? And she was Jesus's mother. And we are so thankful that she, an ordinary woman, an ordinary girl, actually, she was very young, was willing to do something that God asked her to do and to be extraordinary. Our um, power verse for the day comes from Luke 18, 27. What is impossible for people is possible with God. I would like for you to think about that this week. Go ahead and, and make something feel a little bit like Christmas in your house because for the next four weeks, we're going to continue on with our real Christmas series. I hope you have a wonderful week and I look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.